If you watched part 1 of this video, you already know most beginner projects are just cookie cutter. Everyone is setting up the same home labs and running the same scanning tools. In part 1, we flipped that script. You built many projects that actually solve the real headaches security teams deal with every single day. In this video, I'm going to walk you through three more realistic beginner friendly projects. Each solves a real world problem that costs company money every single day. And by the end of this video, you will have a full set of projects that prove you don't just know security tools. You also know how to think like someone already on the job. Stick with me for the next few minutes. If you ever felt the same frustration about the beginner projects, drop a comment. I would like to hear your thoughts. And just in case, if you haven't met before, my name is Sam. I've spent over a decade helping mid-size and Fortune 500 companies lock down their security. I've also coached countless people from zero experience to real cybersecurity jobs. Imagine your company has a lot of employees coming and going. Some people join the company, others move around into different departments, and eventually Eventually, some leave altogether. Every time one of these changes happen, their access to systems need to be updated. So they only see what they are supposed to see. But here is a problem that shows up in almost every company. Nobody is consistently checking to make sure employees only have the right level of access. Someone who moved over from engineering to product management might still have the admin permissions on your code repository. Even worse, someone who left the company months ago could still be listed with active access in your systems. This is exactly how companies end up with costly security incidents. Attackers love to find leftover accounts or use overprivileged user credentials to get in. So here is your mini project. You're going to step into the role of someone working in IAM, which stands for Identity and Access Management. Your goal is to set up a small mock database that represents employee access, run simple checks on it, where the problems are, and how you would clean them up. Here are the steps. One, start by sketching a simple diagram that shows what happens when an employee joins the company, moves to a new role, or leaves entirely. This is called a joiner, mover, lever, or JML workflow. You can draw this on a paper or use a free tool like draw.io. Step two, set up a tiny SQL database. SQLite is perfect for this because you don't need even a server. It's just a file on your machine. Create a table called users that has columns like name, current role, employment status, like active or terminated, and permissions level like admin, read only, or none. Step three, insert about 10 fictitious employees into the table. Make sure to include a few interesting use cases like someone who switched from engineering to marketing but still has admin rights and someone who is marked as terminated but still shows access. Step 4. Write simple SQL queries to spot the problems. For example, run a query that lists all users with admin privileges. Then one that shows any employees who are marked terminated but still have permissions set to anything other than none. This is exactly how a real IAM analyst or auditor would start finding risk. Step 5. Write a short summary that flags these issues. For instance, you could say two terminated employees still have active privileges and one marketing team member retains admin access on engineering systems. Then explain how we would clean it up, like immediately disabling terminated accounts and reviewing admin roles every quarter. By the way, if this is helping you out, hit like and subscribe. It tells me to make more videos like this. And if you've got a questions or a different take, drop it in the comments. I'm always curious to see what you think. Picture this. Your company uses Amazon Web Services to store all kinds of files. Some are just harmless marketing images, but others might include sensitive invoices, customer contracts, or internal reports. All of this data is sitting in an S3 bucket, which are basically the folders in the cloud. Here is where the trouble starts. Many companies set up their S3 buckets in a hurry and accidentally leave them wide open to the internet. That means anyone, even without a password, could type in the right URL and download those private files. This exact mistake has led to huge data breaches for some of the world's largest companies. What is even worse is that many teams never even realize their buckets are public until a security research or hacker points this out. So here is your mini project. You're going to step into the shoes of a cloud security analyst and check whether your company's S3 buckets are properly locked down. Your goal is to build a tiny mock environment, 
Find out if any buckets are publicly accessible and write a short note showing what you discovered and how you fixed it. And if this all sounds a bit overwhelming, I get it, I've been right where you are. That's why I put together a free guide and workshop to help you figure out the best role for you and prep without wasting weeks on stuff you don't need. Grab it from the link in the description, it's totally free and honestly it'll save you a ton of time. Here are the steps. Step 1. Set up a free AWS account if you don't already have one. AWS has a free tier that is perfect for small practice projects like this one. Inside your account, create a couple of test S3 buckets. Make sure you upload a few harmless text files or images so you have something to test with. In the AWS and console, experiment by adjusting the bucket permissions. Make one bucket private and intentionally set the other one to be public. This way you can see exactly how the access settings change. Use the AWS CLI or even the web console's permission tabs to list the buckets and see which ones allow public access. If you want to be a little bit more technical, run a simple AWS CLI command to see the permissions directly from your Windows or Linux terminal. Step 4. Write a short summary explaining which buckets were exposed and what the risk could be if they contained sensitive data. Then outline a simple fix, like changing the ACLs, access control list to block public access, or adding a policy that enforces encryption and logging. Now imagine your company is ready to launch a brand new e-commerce platform so customers can buy products online. The developers are excited to build it. But before any code gets pushed live, the CISO wants the security teams to look over the design to spot potential problems early. The truth is, many companies wait way too long to bring in security. They will build the whole app, launch it, and only realize afterwards they left huge gaps like storing passwords improperly or not encrypting payment data. Fixing those mistakes later is way more expensive and by then, customers might have already been exposed. That's why security engineers step in early to map out threats and build safer systems from the start. So here is your mini project. You're going to step into the role of a security engineer or architect. Your goal is to take a brand new e-commerce app idea, figure out where it could be attacked, and write a short design note showing how you would secure it before the first line of code is written. Here are the steps. Step 1. Start by drawing a simple data flow diagram. You can use pen and paper or use a free tool like draw.io. Map out how data moves from the user's browser to your web server, to the database and finally to a payment processor. This gives you a clear picture of where data is flowing. Step 2. Identify at least 5 possible threats. For example, think about SQL injections in the login form, cross-site scripting on product pages, credential stuffing on login attempts, person in the middle attack. Step 3. For each of these threats, write down one or two ways you would prevent them. This could include using parameterized queries, adding multi-factor authentication, or using secure payment gateways that handle credit card data. Put all of this into a short security design document. Even half a page that says, here is how data flows, here is what could go wrong, and here is how you would stop it, is enough to prove you are thinking like a security engineer. But if you haven't watched the part one of the series, you are missing a lot. So I encourage you to go watch the part one of this video. See you there.